Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. Tonight on News Hour. All central bank offices nationwide will be picketed. All central bank from the CBN headquarters will be shot. Till further notice. Nigeria Labour Congress directs workers to picket CBN offices nationwide over Naira Crunch. APC chieftains take protest to INEC office in Kano as Abba Kabir asks supporters to shelve planned trek to Kano. Sultan of Sokoto declares commencement of Ramadan fast. And on the foreign scene, Chad jails over 400 rebels for life following the death of former ruler Idris Deby. Hello and welcome to News Hour on Trust TV. I'm Darshan Hussein Usman. The news in detail. The leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress on Wednesday directed all workers to picket all the offices of Central Bank of Nigeria nationwide starting from next week over the current cash crunch in the country. NLC President Joe Ajero, who gave the directive in Abuja, said the action became imperative following the expiration of the one-week uh, one ultimatum given to the Apex Bank to make cash available for Nigerians. Consequently, the CWC in session resolved to go into the process of actualizing the one-week notice we gave. From this week, from Friday, there will be mobilization of all state councils through a neck meeting. All unions I already, have already been directed to mobilize all their organs and their branches by Wednesday next week. All central bank offices nationwide will be picketed. All central bank from the CBN headquarters will be shot till further notice. Workers are directed to stay at home and join in the picketing exercise. Supporters of the All Progressives Congress on Wednesday submitted a petition against the declaration of Abba Kabir Yusuf of the New Nigeria People's Party as Gano governorship elect. The party chieftains, Muhammad Garba, Rabiu Suleiman Bachi, Bafa Baba Dang Agundi, led by the party's legal counsel, Barrister Abdul Fage, presented the petition at INEC office. INEC's head of administration department, Lowell Sani, received the petition on behalf of the Resident Electoral Commission. Voters that we are counting, and for this reason, it is glaringly clear that the margin of win is just 122. And with this, it is apparent that there is need for that election to be declared inconclusive. The actual declaration of result has to go and uh, make a report at the national office. So we have now presented your grievances, which we will collect definitely to promote us. So thank you very much for presenting your grievances. Daily Trust Bureau Chief in Kano, Clement Oloyede, gives an update on the protest. What happened today was that uh, the All Progressive Congress, uh, APC, carried out a protest to INEC office in Kano. And uh, when they got to INEC office, they basically just submitted a petition. And a copy of that petition that uh, we were able to uh, see, what they were demanding for is the immediate uh, uh, removal of the INEC uh, Resident Electoral Commission in Kano. They accused the REC of uh, being biased and uh, working with the NMPP to rig the election, according to them, I'm quoting them directly. So basically, this is what uh, they are demanding for. They said they've written several of these petitions in the past, 
and uh, none has been given uh, attention. This uh, fresh petition is coming on the heels of the uh, press conference yesterday where they demanded that INEC should, as a matter of uh, immediacy, they gave INEC seven days to review the uh, election held in Kano and said that all outrightly the election ought to be declared as inconclusive. So basically today's uh, protest was an offshoot of the uh, press conference yesterday. Uh, but uh, unfortunately after the protest and after the leaders of the party had uh, dispersed and went their way, Woodlongs took advantage of the uh, scenario and started uh, unleashing mayhem on unsuspecting members of the public. They were snatching people's phones, uh, brandishing weapons and chasing uh, people left, right and center. I personally had a brief encounter with some of them. We had to engage a uh, reverse gear on our vehicle and drive speedily out of the way because we were running towards us and uh, wanting to attack. These were They were doing this indiscriminately. It was not just uh, targeting uh, uh, supporters of another party. They were just taking advantage of the commercial cost by the protests. The Kano state governor-elect, Abakabir Yusuf, has urged those striking from other states of the country to Kano for his victory to discontinue. He asked them to instead pray for the ingenuity and guidance of his leadership towards delivering the dividends of democracy. Some social media platforms have reported that a youth, among others, has already commenced striking from Suleja in Niger state to congratulate the incoming Kano governor. But Abba, in a statement on Wednesday through his spokesperson, Sanusi Tofa, said prayers are sufficient as a show of solidarity and celebration for his victory at the polls on Saturday and not miles of trekking by some of his enthusiasts, especially given the state of insecurity in the country. Chairman Senate Committee on Appropriations, Barrow de Brin, has declared his intention to contest for Senate presidency in the 10th National Assembly. Barrow made the declaration Wednesday while briefing reporters at the National Assembly in Abuja. The Colonel North Senator said he is the most experienced among those who are seeking to occupy the coveted office. He said the Northwest should be considered for the position of the Senate president, having given the highest votes to the president-elect. Barrow also dismissed the calls in some quarters for a Christian Senate president to balance APC's Muslim-Muslim ticket, saying competence should, be, should not be sacrificed for religious sentiment. The principle, is it, it is the um, tradition all over the world. So, um, it's there in our rules. Is there a rule that, and this rule is a product of the Constitution. Section 60 gives the Latin National Assembly to create means of regulating its procedure, including summoning recess, I mean, summoning the, 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 the Houses of Assembly, that is the Senate and the House of Reps, and then the recess as well. And that gives, you know, and that gives us the reason why we have our standing rules. And it's clear in the standing rules that aspiration, or election for the office of the Senate presidency shall be in accordance with ranking. And amongst those who are seeking to acquire that office, as we speak, I have the highest ranking. I have the highest ranking. So it's constitutional. And we want our president to go for second term after this election, after this one. We want him to go for second term because we saw what he did in Lagos, transform Lagos to become an economic Eldorado. So we want to we want it to replicate that here in, in, in Nigeria, replicate that for, it, for the entire country. And he was able to do that when he served two terms. Zamfar State Governor-elect Dode Loaldere has described his victory as the collective desire of people of the state for a positive change. The Governor-elect made this assertion while reacting to his victory in Zamfara. The report. The victory of the People's Democratic Party PDP and its governorship candidates at the 2023 general elections in Zamfara State, which unseated the incumbent governor, Bello Mohammed, will be the second term a sitting governor will be defeated in the history of the state. Governor Mahmouda Shinkafi, who was elected on the platform of the All Nigerian People's Party, ANPP, and later defected to the People's Democratic Party PDP, was defeated in 2011 general election 
by Abdulaziz Yari of the AMPP. This is also the first time since the 1999 the PDP would win the governorship elections in Zamfara State. The governor-elect Dawda Lawal Dere appealed to the people to remain calm, peaceful and below abiding. Alhamdulillah, we struggle, we work hard, and the people answer our call. And therefore, I want to use this opportunity to thank them and to assure them that we are here on the rescue mission. Very soon, inshallah, Zamfara will witness entire changes, inshallah. A member of the Publicity Committee of the 2023 PDP Governorship Campaign Council in Zamfara State, Nasiru Gutso, described the PDP victory at the governorship polls as victory for the people of the state. He said the governor-elect had prepared himself before joining the governorship race. Therefore, he will hit the ground running to provide purposeful leadership that will impact positively on the lives of people. The entire world, not only Nigeria, the entire world knows what is going on in Zafar State and how this administration and the previous and fails of our citizens ruefully in terms of security. So our first priority is security. With security, our people can go back to their farmlands and businesses. The Zafar State governorship election was keenly contested by a candidate of All Progressive Congress APC, incumbent Governor Bello Mohammed and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Dauda Lowell Deri. The PDP governorship candidate polled 377,726 to defeat the incumbent governor, Bello Mohammed, who scored 311,976. Few days after the re-election of Gombe State Governor, Inoua Yahaya of the All Progressives Congress, Gombe residents are now setting an agenda for his second tenure. Ibrahim Ismail, who went around the state, reports that people identified job creation, health and commerce as critical areas that need urgent attention from the new administration. The report. Governor Inoua Yahaya of the All Progressive Congress APC was first elected as the governor of Gombe State in 2019 elections and was re-elected in the recently conducted governorship election in the state. Following his re-election, the residents of Gombe have begun to present demands and set agenda for the second tenure of the governor's administration. I want this government to support small businesses like us. This will improve the economy of the people. We need jobs and timely payment of workers' salary. In my area, Akko LGA, we need roads and hospital in Wuro Bridge and Bomala to enjoy dividend of democracy. We normally go to Pantami to access health care. While some residents demand job creation, infrastructural development and boost of commercial activities, others want improvement of the security architecture as they call for an end to activities of political thugs known as Kalare boys. I want the governor to tackle the menace of Kalare boys. They inflict injuries and snatch people's phones. They destroy businesses. We want this to be addressed. They should be given jobs or be tackled by security forces. In his acceptance speech, after the re-election, Governor Inuwa Yahya vowed to listen to the needs of the people and also run an inclusive government. I know about this. If the ultimate objective of all political parties and constituencies is about the peace, progress and development, 
of our diaspora. In behalf of all of them, support us in building our diaspora forward. On my part, I'm ready to work with all stakeholders in running all inclusive government for the benefit of our people. Since 2003, Gombe State has been under the leadership of the People's Democratic Party PDP before the ruling All Progressive Congress APC clinched to power in 2019 and 2023. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Gombe. Thank you, Ibrahim Ismail. Although the governorship and House of Assembly elections conducted on Saturday, 18th March, has come and gone, the outcome of the poll has continued to dominate discourse among different groups. Jimmy Adzande speaks to some Benue residents who commended the process and also pointed areas that need to be improved upon. The report. The atmosphere in Benue state appears calm and with hope amid jubilation by supporters of the Yes Father movement across party lines. Most of the residents of Benue who responded said the outcome of the election was the choice of majority of Benue electorate who came out in large number to exercise their civic duty. 26, 27, 28, 29. It actually reflected the wishes of people. Because prior to the election in Benue State, from the motor parks to the markets to the civil servants, you would hear them calling for a change from the PDP to the APC. The election was so good. This is the ever good election I've seen since I was born in this country. The election was peaceful, even though some people tried to disrupt some places, but the security were able to take control. The electoral umpire, INEC, is giving a path on the back by Benue residents. They said it was an improvement for the presidential and national assembly elections. A very fascinating thing to behold on that election day. The enthusiasm, the way the people took out to vote, it shows that they had assurance in the process of INEC and believing that their vote counts. Before now, people hardly turn up for voting, and at the end, they, they never feel owning the system. If you look at the uh, situation before even the election, it was uh, so clear. And I can categorically say that yes, this is a reflection of uh, what the people want. So the election was okay. It was a good contest and the best manner. The residents are optimistic that the process is gaining confidence of more Nigerians who hither to generated voter apathy. I like it better than presidential election, but of course there is still room for improvement. You know, part the issues of violence, part the issue of snatching of ballot boxes that we recorded in a few places. But generally, it was a good performance. And for me, as a scientist, political scientist, I'm not surprised that Reverend Father Alia of the APC is the governor elect. Reverend Father High St. Ali of the APC was declared winner and returned electors as the sixth civilian governor of the state. This is the second time a Catholic priest will occupy the government house in Benue State. The first was Reverend Father Moses Adasu, who was elected governor, an administration that was short lived, though with massive monumental projects. The Independent National Electoral Commission has declared the Labour Party candidate Alex Oti as the winner of the March 18th governorship election in Abia State. The state returning officer, Professor Nenna Oti, while announcing the result, noted that the Labour Party polled a total of 175,467 against his closest rival, the People's Democratic Party, who came second with 88,529. The Young Progressives Party came third with 28,972, while the All Progressives Congress polled a total of 24,091 votes to emerge fourth. Recall that the electoral umpire had suspended the coalition of results from Obingwa local government area for review following reports of malpractice from the local government area.
The result was announced in the absence of PDP party agents. That Auntie Alex Chairman of the Labour Party has been satisfied. The government of the law is hereby declared the winner and is the dawn elector. I want to sincerely thank every Abian and non indigenous ally who participated in this election. As you are all aware, this was my third attempt at contesting for this office in my quest to implement my long-held vision of rebuilding Abia State as truly God's own state. We believe you. We believe you. At this third time, it pleased God to give us victory. In the words of one Labour Party stalwart, the siege is over. Nigeria's president-elect Bola Tinubu on Tuesday traveled to France to participate in the lesser Hajj and also rest from the rigors of the just-concluded elections. Tinubu's spokesman, Tunde Rahman, in a statement on Wednesday said the president-elect will use the visit to plan his transition program ahead of May 29, 2023 inauguration. Rahman said Tinubu is expected back in Nigeria soon. You're watching News R on Trust TV. Coming up after the break. How cash crunch affects Ramadan fast preparation. Stay with us. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching News R on Trust TV. A recap of our top stories. You heard that Nigeria Labour Congress directs workers to picket CBN offices nationwide over Naira Crunch. You also heard that APC chieftains take protest to INEC office in Kano as Abba Kabir asks supporters to shelve planned Shrek to Kano. Moving to other stories, a federal high court in Abuja has dismissed an application filed by suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police Abbakari challenging the jurisdiction of the court to try him on drug trafficking charges. 
Justice Emeka Nguite held that the powers of the Police Service Commission do not supersede the powers of the Federal High Court, averring that the Federal High Court has the power to hear drug-related offences as enshrined in the Constitution and the NDLEA Act. Noel Sampson reports. Abu Akiari, through his counsel, had told the court that the charges against him were premature, insisting that the NDLEA ought to have allowed the court to exhaust its internal machinery before it instituted the action. He told the court that the police had already commenced an investigation into allegations against him and issued an internal report. The court, however, held that the subject matter of the case is within the jurisdiction of the court. The trial judge said Section 251 of the Constitution confers the court the powers to hear and determine the charge. The prosecution cannot proceed to charge them to court unless they follow the procedures as set down, set down in the Constitution. That is, to allow the prosecution to allow the defendant to face police service commission disciplinary procedure. That procedure has not been followed. That application to Kosh was taken at the last adjourned date and really was delivered today. The court in its wisdom is of the opinion that police service commission is not listed in the exception provisions in the constitution. And I said that he will, not, he will not allow the police service commission to proceed with the matter before the charge proceeds. So as it is now, he insists the court ruled that trial must continue. Abba Kerry maintained that he could lead the charge to court upon conclusion of the internal investigation by the police. It is my own belief and my own conviction that the provisions as stated in section 153 and subparagraph L and subparagraph M is sacrosanct. It's referring to the Nigerian Police Force and the Nigerian Police Council as well as the Nigerian Police Service Commission. There is no way and how the police can have a crime record without first knowing what their officers are doing, if at all there's any criminal allegation lying against them. It has to be investigated by the police. For the NDLA to come in, what it simply means is that until that drug issue or drug criminal liability has been established by the police through their investigation, then they, of course, after the due process of how police officers are expected to be disciplined, they can now hand them over to the, the appropriate authority, which is the NDLA. With this application, we plan on the argument that the Police Service Commission has similar powers to investigate and discipline errant police officers in line with the Police Act and regulations. The same way the National Judicial Council disciplined judicial officers this means that the court will now begin its trials. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Federal Executive Council has approved the contract for the construction of barracks accommodation for personnel of the Drug Law Enforcement Agency as part of security measures to protect them from consistent harassment and threat to life by perpetrators of drug crimes. Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, who briefed newsmen at State House Abuja on Wednesday, said operations of the NDLEA had resulted in 2,904 convictions in 2022 alone. The approval came on a day the Cabinet approved the review of the 2022 National Agricultural Seed Policy with the aim of providing Nigerian farmers easy access to quality seeds that can compete in the world market. Kendi Amodu reports. The federal government is impressed with the performance of the NDLA in recent years and is also concerned with the dangers operatives have been exposed to because of the nature of their work. As a reward for a job well done, the Federal Executive Council approves an award of contract for the construction of barracks accommodation for personnel of the agency. There has been renewed and sustained onslaught against drug cartels and barons over time. Within the three quarters of 2023, about 18,940 arrests were effected by the NDLEA, and indeed drugs, the estimated value of which is over 40 billion naira, were 
confiscated. Council of Ministers is also approving the review of the 2022 National Agricultural Seed Policy with the aim of providing Nigerian farmers easy access to quality seeds that can compete in the world market. Minister of Agriculture Mohamed Abubakar says that with the emerging global technology in seed production, the agriculture sector will be accorded greater priority so as to sustain national food security. Now, incidentally, in the ministry we have several institutions that are involved in research for standardization of seeds, our own agencies, and we depend on those more than any. We regulate even bringing in modified seed, genetically modified from outside the country, how much of it is brought, even if it's going to be subjected to the rigors of investigation. Meanwhile, the Minister of Transportation has sought an obtained approval of council for provisions of four customized fire service search and rescue vans for the seaports in Port Harcourt and Tinkan Island and the Marina National Ports Authority headquarters in Lagos at the sum of 510.9 million naira. The Council of Ministers also approved the contract for the procurement of rolling stock operations and maintenance equipment for the Kano Maradi Standard Gauge Rail Line that is currently under construction at a contract sum of $984.7 million. From State House Abuja, Kehinde Amudu, Trust TV News. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the 2023 World Water Day, attention is being focused on accelerating change to solve the water and sanitation crisis in the country. Trustee Vizkabir Lowell in this report speaks to some residents of the FCT on how they can gain access to clean and safe water. The report. United Nations, 1.4 million people die annually and 74 million will have their lives shortened by diseases related to poor water, sanitation, and hygiene. In Nigeria, the crisis is compounded by poverty as a large majority of Nigerians find it difficult to pay for clean water because of their low income amid competing needs. This is even as the country is said to be off track to meet the Sustainable Development Goal SDG 6 that aims to provide water and sanitation for all by year 2030. In the FCT, residents said residents and farms do not have the safe water and toilets needed to live healthy lives. We are here this morning at Jabi Lake to keep the, the, the lake clean because if the lake is actually not clean, it won't be habitable for us. People actually come to the lake from far and near to relax. But once the lake is very dirty, it will be unhealthy for people to come and sit close to the lake. We are here due to uh, the knowledge we have about this environment that people come to litter during uh, most of the activities so we choose here in particular so we can carry out the exercise and to sensitize people about uh, the need to keep our environment safe and clean so as today being world uh, water day it is crucial for us also to you know campaign against the indiscriminate disposal of waste plastics into the water bodies some said government needs to sensitize nigerians on how to make water sanitation a priority and not an option we are going to make policy to have good policy to enforce it for the for the society so we can have a very good environment we can't come here and litter because um, it's an open space we should have a very conducive place. we should create they should have waste bin they should have paper ba uh, leather bags where we can dispose things we can't just come to a, a park because it's an open space and dispose anyway this is another opportunity for us to sensitize the um, society uh, particularly focusing on the team for this year where we are talking about accelerating change. We want to start uh, from the government. We know government has a lot of policies uh, in terms of uh, maybe how we manage our waste. We also have bodies that have been instituted by government to manage this uh, uh, process. But we want to call on government uh, to use this opportunity to reinforce their policies in case these policies are lying dormant. The United Nations estimates that it will require a four-time increase in progress to meet the water sustainability targets. According to United Nations Water Scarcity Overview, over 6 billion people don't have access to drinking water, adding that 3.5 million don't know how the water comes. 
because it is unmonitored. Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News, Abuja. Motorists flying the Kaduna Abuja Expressway say they are relieved that contractors have resumed work on the road. The commuters, while calling for government to hasten the completion of the road, also believe that accidents and security challenges along the road will be reduced when the project is delivered. The report. Abuja Kaduna Dual Carriageway was constructed by the military regime of General Ibrahim Babangida more than four decades ago. Since then, the road has only gone through a series of maintenance by the federal government. Presently, the road is in a dilapidated state due to potholes and cracks, which motorists affect not only vehicular movement, but also else the operations of bandits on the road. The condition of the road was so bad that once it is five o'clock, we all closed for the day. The road is not just bad for traveling, it is bad for our vehicles because every now and then we have to repair and maintain. Once it is evening, we stop plying the road because the road is bad and prone to insecurity. Due to the poor condition of the road, the administration of President Buhari awarded the contract for rehabilitation and expansion of the Abuja Kaduna Road. However, work on the road, which has been suspended, has now resumed. This is Kaduna Abuja Road. You can see behind me the construction has resumed fully. Some of the motorists here are expressing delight and appreciation on the resumption of the work here. Some of them are praying and also counting the benefit the completed role will bring like fewer accidents and reduction of banditry activities. We thank God that the government is reconstructing the road. It will ease our business. We are happy with the construction. It will help us. The bandits operate in areas where the road is bad. When it completed, it will help in reducing banditry on the road. Beyond motorist communities on the Abuja Kaduna Road are optimistic that if completed, the 182 kilometers road will allow security agency to respond to distress calls and act swiftly in cases of emergency. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Thank you, Bello. Sultan of Sokoto and President General Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Saad Abubakar, has declared Thursday, March 23rd, as first day of Ramadan 1444 after Hijra, directed Muslim faithfuls in the country to begin fasting. The declaration followed the verification of moon sighting reports received across the country by the National Moon Sighting Committee. Today, Wednesday, the 29th day of Shaban, 1444 after Hijra of our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is equivalent to 22nd March 2023, marks the end of the month of Shaban, 1444 after Hijra as the reports of moon sighting of the new moon were received from Muslim leaders and organizations across the length and breadth of our great country, which were duly authenticated and verified by the states and national moon sighting committees. Consequently, tomorrow, Thursday, the 23rd day of March 2023 becomes the first day of Ramadan 1444 after Hijra. We therefore call on all Muslims to commence fasting accordingly. 
The Muslim Ummah have called on the government to regulate prices of food to make the fasting period worthwhile. The call is coming as Muslims all over the world are set to begin Ramadan fasting amidst hike in food prices. Zainab Garai was at one of the markets in the FCT and files in this report. Ramadan period is the time for Muslim faithfuls not just to be closer to Allah but also a time for sabr reflection. It is a time when household demands significantly go up, especially food items accompanied by the hike in their prices. We are facing um, big challenge. Before you see money, buy food. It's a problem. Talk more of a uh, person is, is doing fasting. Understand? To carry money, buy common domino is going to be a problem for him because there's no cash. So, and these, like these people selling small, small things, how are they going to collect transfer all pure is there's not? So that is the problem we are we are facing. The season of Ramadan by Muslims cannot be avoided even without the cash. We as Muslim faithful must observe the fasting period. We are calling on the government to make Nera available, which will go a long way to cushion the suffering being faced by the people, especially at this month of sober reflection. Fasting this year will be somehow difficult as a result of high prices of commodities. To make it more works, the online transfer is not working out, making it very, very difficult for people to transact or buy their or buy things in the market. The money is not forthcoming. This situation has continued to put harsh burden on households. It's very, very bad though. Why? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, full stuff, the prices are increasing, you know, and there's no cash. If, even if you have the cash, even if you have your uh, card, maybe you want to withdraw, they will tell you say there's no cash, and if you go to the bank, they will say there's no cash, queues, queues everywhere, ev everywhere, so people are suffering. I don't think that the Ramadan people enjoy that. May they help us with that currency. May the money they flow. How will the money they flow? Everybody go see money. Who go put money for back? He go see and collect. No collect. So may they help us. Make we do it safely. Residents further explained that the scarcity of Naira is affecting day-to-day -day living, where they called on the authorities concerned to come to their aid, especially at this time. Zainab Garai, Trust TV News, Abuja. Scarcity of the Naira notes still lingers in Katana ahead of Ramadan fast as many Nigerians spend hours on ATM machines without getting cash. Low-income earners in Katana want government to intervene as President Muhammad Buhari assures that the currency scarcity is a temporary measure. Abdullahi Yamadi completes the report. Malam Garabashehu, while admitting that the presidency is fully aware of the difficulties being faced by Nigerians in accessing Nera notes, gave assurances that banknotes will be made available immediately after the general elections. He, however, shifted the blame on some politicians and commercial banks who are mostly holding the currency for their selfish interest only to make life unbearable to the citizens. Let me remind Nigerians that the federal government had only one bank, the central bank, and it has been making monies available to all commercial banks. People should be asking commercial banks about the alleged diversion and hoarding of cash. As a government, we have done our best. To most of these residents, the cash scarcity should end while they struggle to have some basic necessities ahead of 30 days Ramadan fast. Actually, I'm here at the bank since early morning. So, and finally, I didn't get the money. At the end, they tell me that the money has already finished. So there's no money at the ATM right now. Since I think a week ago, they not have, they did not put any money at the ATM card. Three days, two days, more than that, you will suffer. See us here since morning. Before you enter, to just lay the complaint. 
so we don't know what is happening. Please and please, we need your assist to send our message to our leaders. High cost of food items coupled with fuel shortage and the scarcity of Naira will make this year's Ramadan fast the most difficult in recent times. Though the Ramadan is approaching, but the price, prices of commodities are still normal. I don't know whether they are going to creep because of this uh, uh, cash crunch. So commodities are still normal. And some of them, if you go to buy, the way they do is that some of them don't have uh, access for transfer or uh, it, uh, this thing, POS. So if they go to another person to do it, they will add money for you. That is the only increase I'm experiencing because now I bought a, a maize. Well, like we have a two type of soil here, cooking oil here. One palm oil and the vegetable oil, ground soil. Some of them increase a little bit. Some increase, like a vegetable oil now increase. Like, like some weeks back, we sell, we sell the jerrican 25 liters at the rate of a 32. Now we start 3,000. Nigerians hope to see the return of the old days when banknotes were available to buy food, stuff, and fuel, even at higher prices. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazina. You're still watching News R on Trust TV. The news resumes shortly. Welcome back. The House of Representatives has considered and approved legislation that made provisions to amend the administration and management of customs and excise in Nigeria. The bill seeks to repeal and reenact the 63-year-old customs and excise laws that have been in operation in Nigeria. Some of the reforms in the enacted legislation relate to issues of funding, appointment of the Comptroller General of Customs, and the recruitment of personnel for the service. An overriding benefit of the reform is enabling an increase in revenue generation for Nigeria from operations of the customs. Finance complained that the chairman of the board, supposed to be the minister, not a retired Deputy Comptroller General of Customs, which we corrected here. So the mistake then was that anywhere board appeared, supposed to be changed to minister. When they were doing the cleaning, they didn't do that. So that was why they brought it back. Let's now join Chair Makangwafo for business news. The International Gas Union, IGU, has urged Nigeria and other gas-rich African countries to adopt natural gas locally to close energy access gaps. It also said African countries can reap more rewards from more natural gas exports. The organization made this call in its March 2023 Global Voice of Gas report, which noted that Africa had recently been hit hard by high food inflation, energy and supply chain costs. On the bright side, however, the IGU said Africa's substantial natural gas reserves can be used not only to support its own economic prosperity and end energy poverty, but also provide the wider world with more reliable and cleaner energy. In the report, the IGU said that Nigeria liquefied natural gas NLNG Limited has outstanding potential and generated $9 billion in taxes and $18 billion in dividends to the Nigerian government in recent years.
The federal government has announced the removal of its proposed 5% excise duty on telecommunication services. Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Isa Pantemi, disclosed this at a press briefing in Abuja. The government announced that this was in line with the recommendations of the Presidential Review Committee on Excise Duty in the digital economy sector, which was constituted to review the implementation of excise duty in the telecom sector. According to Pantami, if the tax had been upheld, many businesses would have been negatively impacted. He further stated that the telecom sector was already paying 41 categories of taxes, levies and charges, added that there is no need for excise duty in the telecom sector because the industry is already heavily taxed. And finally, in stocks. The Nigerian equity market on Wednesday closed on a positive note as the all share index moved up slowly by 0.06% to close at 54,936.11 points. Investors gained 17 billion naira as the market capitalization grew by 0.06% to close at 29.927 trillion naira. The market broke close negative as nine equities appreciated in the share prices against 14 that declined. An aggregate of 134 million units of shares were traded in 2,479 deals valued at 1.33 billion naira. And that's it on Business News. I am Chiamaka Mafo. The United States government says it will consider all available actions against those who undermined the just concluded elections in Nigeria. The U.S. said it is deeply disturbed by cases of voter intimidation and the use of ethnically charged rhetoric during the governorship and House of Assembly elections held on March 18. In a statement, the United States mission in Nigeria called on the federal government and other relevant agencies to ensure that those who aided voter suppression are brought to book. Following the declaration of Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress as winner of the presidential poll, opposition parties called for the cancellation of the exercise. The People's Democratic Party, the Labour Party and two other parties have already filed petitions at the election tribunal to challenge the result in court. Some groups, including the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum, have also berated INEC for the conduct of the 2023 presidential poll, describing it as fraudulent. Now away from Nigeria, a public prosecutor has said that more than 400 rebels in Chad were handed life sentences following the death of former ruler Idris Deby, who was killed in 2021. Prosecutor of the capital, Jemaina Mohamed el Hajj Abba Nana, said after a mass trial, they were sentenced for acts of terrorism, mercenarism, recruitment of child soldiers, and assaulting the head of state. He did not give a detailed figure for those jailed, saying only that more than 400 were sentenced to life, while 24 other defendants were acquitted. The trial opened last month behind closed doors at Klesum Prison, 20 kilometers southeast of the capital. In early 2021, the country's main rebel group, the Front for Change and Concord in Chad, launched an offensive on the north of the country from bases in Libya. On April 20, the army announced that Marshal Deby, Chad's iron-fisted ruler for the previous three decades, had died from wounds sustained in fighting. Let's now join Adeni Adishafe for sports news. Nigeria began the game on a promising note and almost scored in the third minute, but the effort went off the poles. A 27 minute free kick by Olympic Eagles defender Ibrahim Buhari hit the bar to deny the Nigerian team the chance to register a goal. Nigeria missed another chance in the 44th minute of the match before the break. The second half continued to the 62nd minute when Guinea's goalkeeper Mori Keita saved Nigeria's Jonathan Alukus short. The effort from both teams at the 72nd, 75th, 79th, 89th minute, but all were futile, bringing the match to end in a barren draw. Christopher Nwaisi, however, got a second yellow in the 89 minutes and was red carded, reducing Nigerians' team to play 10 players to play with 10 players. Despite playing at home, observers say the Olympic Eagles lack character, cohesiveness, and ability to withstand the Guineans, fearing that it may be more difficult to beat them away. 
We just finished watching the match, and Nigeria versus Guinea. The match was not interesting. As far as I know, as a coach, I don't think those boys, they have coach. And at the same time, I don't even think they have a team play. Because everybody I see there is not the same people I'm watching in training, during their training days before the match. So what I want to say is that I don't think we have a team to go to Guinea. If we go to Guinea, they are going to deal with us. Acting General Manager CTFC Clement Omeje says the team did not meet the expectations of Nigerians as they showed no depth to hold the Guineans. I looked at the team. They didn't really have a plan, starting from the first half. After the first half, the second half, the Guineans were more relaxed. The Guineans have more confidence with the ball. In as much as the team was playing, I expected the coaches to detect where the faults are. They made changes 25 minutes to go. The team feel like they want to play. Before you know it, they fall back. Not only minding that, the team lack character. The team lack coordination. They are not playing together like a team. So they really need to go back to the drawing board, work on the team at a, at, at a large then come back with another plan. If they don't do that, I don't think if they will make it in Guinea because Guinea are more star-studded side because now they didn't even expect what they have. But I know they will unleash when they get to Guinea. On the 23 Eagles will face their Guinea counterpart on 28 March 2023 in the second leg of under 23 AFCON qualifiers. That's Sport News. Um, Adeni Aji Shafe. With that, we've come to the end of News on Trust TV. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Hussein Al Usman. Thanks for watching. Daily Trust News Center, this is the News Hour.